next on the Gospel Bill Show. Gospel Bill, it's scary. What's scary? I don't know. Well, how can I help you if you don't tell me what you're talking about? Well, you see, I was looking for the doc, and I heard he was out at the Perriman place, so I went out there, and I didn't see anybody, so I knocked on the door. Nobody comes to the door, so I knocked on it again. And then I heard it. Sound like a sick cat. Ooh. What? Well, everything's all right. Gospel Bill's out there. Well, what are we going to do? It's hopeless. We can just sit here and wait it out and hope we don't die. It's the Gospel Bill Show. Featuring Gospel Bill, his sidekick, Nicodemus, Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, and the entire Dry Gulch gang. Well, then I think this one will do, but I want to know if these apples are guaranteed. Oh, well, sure, they're fresh. No, I mean, are they really guaranteed? Well, what do you mean? I want to know if these apples are guaranteed free from worms. See, the rumor has it that old Elmer Barnes likes to come in here and buy apples because he can get a fishing worm in every bite. Sheriff, if you're not happy with that apple, I'll double your money back. Well, I'm in big trouble again. Well, what'd you do, Nicodemus? Nothing. That's just it. Absolutely nothing. Well, if you didn't do anything, why are you in trouble? Well... See, Mr. Farnsworth developed a little arthritis again, and he sent me out to fetch the doc for him, and I've been looking for that doc for three days, and I can't find him anywhere, and if I show back up the ranch without the doc, well, Farnsworth's gonna take that big old cane of his and whop me on the head again. He's already broke three canes on me. Well, did you try the Perriman place? Gospel Bill, I ain't looking for the Perrimans. I'm looking for the doc. Listen, Nicodemus, I rode by the Perriman ranch this morning, and I thought I saw old Doc's buggy outside the house. Oh, really? Well, if I can talk that doc into coming back to the ranch with me, I will avoid a giant headache. Gotta go. <laughs> well, Anna, I sure hope you're right. I hope there aren't any worms in this apple because I don't need the extra protein. Oh, go on. Doc's buggy. Hey, it's me, Nicodemus. Oh, oh no. It's scary. What's scary? I don't know. Well, how can I help you if you don't tell me what you're talking about? Well, you see, I was looking for the doc, and I heard he was out at the Perriman place, so I went out there, and I didn't see anybody, so I knocked on the door. Nobody comes to the door, so I knocked on it again. And then I heard it. It sounded like a sick cat. <gasps> you heard that sound coming from inside Perriman's house? Yeah. <gasps> Well, uh, if you were looking for the dock, why didn't you just go on inside? All by myself? Are you kidding? It's probably dark in there. Well, did you see any other signs of life around the place? Well, there's a few flowers in the flower bed, and the grass was growing. No, and... I mean, did you see anybody out at the barn? Any horses? Anybody? Well, I saw a few horses, but I didn't see any people. Well, that does sound a little bit suspicious, Nicodemus. Maybe we better ride out there and take a look. Yeah, you're not gonna make me go in there by myself, are you? No, I won't make you go by yourself, but let's get out there right away. Good. See, it's just like I told you. There's Doc's buggy and the horses in the barn and the flyers are going right here and who knows what's inside this house? The dog is inside the house. They probably left the dog here while they went fishing or something, Nicodemus. I had to knock twice. Oh. Just like I told you. Yeah, it sounds suspicious. I'm gonna check it out. Oh, no. What, oh, no, what is it? Stay right out. 
out here. Doc, what's the matter? What's going on here? I, I came out a couple of days ago to treat the Perrymans, and I got the same sickness they've got. Well, listen, I can run into town and get some medicine for you. What do I need to get? No, no, you can't go. You've been exposed now. We've got to keep this disease contained in the house. Well, Nicodemus is outside. He hasn't come in yet, and maybe I can send him to get something. What do we need? Uh, it won't do any good. I don't even know what this is. Nicodemus, you out there? Uh, yeah, I'm right here. Listen, pay very careful attention to what I'm about to say. Okay. Ride back into town and don't come back out here. Keep folks away from this ranch. There's something bad going on in here. Well, what is it? Perrymans have some kind of a strange sickness, and when Doc came out to treat him, he got the same thing. He doesn't know of any kind of medicine that'll work on this thing. What kind of disease is it? Well, he doesn't know what it is. Now, listen, you ride on back to town and make sure that folks stay away from this ranch house. You understand? Okay. Doc, is there anything I can do to make these folks feel any better? Terrible. Just terrible. Well, what's terrible? The Perriman place. Well, what's out at the Perriman place? The Perriman family. I know that, but what's the problem? It's unknown. Just start at the beginning, Nicodemus. Okay. This is where our story begins. See, I was looking for the doc, and I heard he is at the Perriman place, so I go out there and I knock on the door and nobody answers so knock a little harder and then I heard it. So I got real scared and I come into town and get Gospel Bill and we both go out there and we knock on the door. Nobody answers so we knock again and we heard it again. So Gospel Bill sneaks in there and there they were! Who? The Perryman family! Oh, I know that but what happened? Well, it seems the doc heard they sick, so he goes out there, and then he gets sick, and he told Gospel Bill to tell me to tell you to tell everybody not to go out there. It's an unknown disease, and it's cantankerous. You mean contagious. That's what I said. Anybody could get it. Well, if Gospel Bill's out there, he knows how to stand on the Word of God. What's that got to do with it? Nicodemus, I know, and you know, and Gospel Bill knows how to trust the Word of God. Those folks are going to be all right. The whole situation's under control. Oh, uh, what situation's under control? Oh, it's terrible, just terrible. Mr. Tutwater, I'll explain it to you. Nicodemus just gets a little bit emotional. It seems to be that there's this little itsy bitsy teeny weeny unknown disease out the Perryman place and it could sweep the entire county of Dry Gulch. What? Uh, well, everything's all right. Gospel Bill's out there. Well, has anyone thought about taking medicine out to these people? Medicine? medicine? No, we hadn't thought about that, you know. I mean, well, instead of just standing around here talking about it, why don't you get some medicine and take it out there? Well, you know, that that's not a bad idea. Uh, gotta go. Well, couldn't you just hurry up a little bit? Listen, Doc, there's gotta be something I can do for these people. No, Sheriff, I don't know of any medicine that can treat this. Well, what are we gonna do? It's hopeless. All we can do is wait it out here. Hope we don't die. Who is it? It's me, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, I thought I told you not to come back here. Well, I know that, but see, I got to talking to Mr. Tutwater, and we was wondering if maybe we couldn't bring you some medicine out here. No, that won't do any good. The doc doesn't know what kind of medicine to use. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want you to go to the jail, Nicodemus. I've got some medicine there. It's my Bible. You get it and get it out here to me right away. You understand? Well, are you going to minister last rites to the Perrymans? No, I'm not going to minister last rites to the Perrymans. They're going to live and not die. I'm going to read God's Word to them, and it's going to make them well. Okay. Listen, Doc. Your medicine may not work, but I've got some coming that'll do us all some good.
Now, where is that thing? In the desk. Are you in there? Get your number. Nicodemus, Nicodemus, what did you find out? Is there some medicine that we can give to these people? Oh, yeah, we got some great stuff. Well, uh, where is it? Well, I don't know. Gospel Bill keeps it around here somewhere. Gospel Bill has some of it? Well, yeah, and if I can't find his, I'll just go borrow Miss Landis if she ain't using it. And, and Landis got some, too. Yeah, but if she's using it, I'll just go out the bunkhouse and get mine. I keep some right beside the bed. Now, wait a minute. Is everybody in this town prepared with some of this stuff? Well, you know, I think a lot of folks are. Uh, in fact, I just took some this morning. Excuse me. Well, no, wait. Well, wait just a minute, Nickens. How, how exactly do you take it? I mean, you take a shot in the arm, or do you, do you rub it on your chest, or do you have to drink it down? No, you just put it right in your heart. Oh, Nicodemus, that sounds dangerous. No, no, not at all. You want some? Uh, uh, are, are you licensed? Oh, no. Uh, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. Here it is. Oh, Nicodemus, that's just a Bible. Well, this is the best kind of medicine that there is. Hey, gotta go. You religious fanatics. God's medicine. You get more fanatical every time I see you. Listen, Perryman, you just hang on. I've got some powerful medicine coming. It's God's Word. Well, God's Word is the most powerful healing force in all the universe. You just wait and see. It's gonna make you well, Perryman. And Gertie, you just hang on. We've got some powerful medicine coming. Yeah, is that you, Nicodemus? Yeah, I got your Bible right here. All right, now listen, I'm going to open this door up just a little bit, and I want you to hand it through the crack, you understand? Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Nicodemus. All right, now, folks, I want you to listen. I know you don't feel well, but I want you to listen. We don't have any other choice. You've got to trust in God's Word because no earthly medicine can make you well. Now, Psalm 107.20 says that He sent His Word and healed them. That means that God's Word has the power to heal your body. This sickness and disease doesn't come from God. It comes from Satan. He's the one who invented germs and diseases and sicknesses. But thank God, we can find answers here in God's Word for every problem Satan brings. Well, what's the latest out the Perrymans? Well, according to the doc, that disease is so unknown, there ain't any medicine for it. So Gospel Bill sent me into town to fetch him his Bible. That's the best answer I know. Well, Nicodemus, did you get that medicine out to Gospel Bill? Well, I sure did, Tutwater, and if I got it figured right, he's probably giving them folks a heavy dose right about now. <laughs> it is beyond my comprehension how people like you can think that reading words out of some book will affect healing in a person's body, especially an unknown disease. Mr. Tutwater, that's all the more reason to use the Word of God when it's an unknown disease. Now, if we had medicine, we'd give it to them, but we don't. And besides that, we don't trust in medicine, we trust in the Word of God. And it's more than just a collection of words, it's God's Word, and that's life. Life, huh? Well, life to me means staying away from the Perryman place. Excuse me. You know, for that Tutwater to be so smart in certain areas, when it comes to the things of God, he's dumber than a barrel full of hair. Listen, folks. God has always promised to heal his people. From the very beginning of his dealings with the children of Israel, he, listen to what he says to Moses and the children of Israel. This is Exodus 15, 26. I am the Lord who heals you. I don't understand it, Sheriff. You should be sick right now. You seem to be immune to this. Listen, the same Word of God that's keeping me from getting this plague is the same Word of God that can heal you. You see, God's power is already at work in me, and it can work in you. It's keeping me from getting sick, but it can help you to get over the sickness that you now have, Doc. Listen, Gertie, the Bible says that Jesus himself took your infirmities and he bore your sicknesses. The power that's in Jesus' word is a thousand times greater than the power of this sickness. 
dirty. Your body is going to get stronger. You're going to get well. Ooh, that's a good idea. Well, I just figure a family like that being sick like they've been, they deserve a good home-cooked meal. But the question arises, exactly what kind of food do we need to send these people? I mean, they've been sick a long time. They're going to be kind of weak. You don't want to send them something that they're going to have to cook. I mean, they have to go out and chop some wood, stand over a hot stove, so well, that's out. Uh, and you don't want to send them something that's too spicy. Their stomach's going to be kind of weak, you know. Uh, something like chips and hot sauce. Oh, that's a no-no. That's hard enough to handle even on a good stomach, if you know what I mean. Nicodemus, I believe we're just going to send them some fresh bread and some nice home-cooked soup. Well, now, I'm not just so sure that fresh bread and soup is the answer. We're going to have to be real conscious of these folks. I mean, they're going to be real weak. They haven't been able to keep their food down. We need to send them something, you know, real nourishing, like, uh, something like, uh, well, you got any, uh, candy bars? Well, you folks look like you're doing a mite better, but I think we'll take another dose right here. This is, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the good news to every creature. And then this is what he said. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Well, I've got to admit, my throat's cleared up, and, and I'm feeling a lot better. Well, that just goes to show you, Doc, God's Word has the power to heal any kind of sickness. Yeah, who is it? Uh, it's me, Nicodemus. Me and Miss Lana got to figuring if you folks was feeling better, you might be ready for some fresh food. So I brung you some. Well, that sounds real good, Nicodemus. Bring it right on in. Well, now, are you sure? I mean, I figured I'd just uh, set it here on the ground. You could get it after I left. Oh, Nicodemus, there's no need to do that. Just bring it right on in here. Everybody's doing just fine now. Oh, good. Oh. You know, I, I was smelling this great soup of Miss Lana's all the way out here, and I was kind of hoping maybe I could have a bowl of it. Well, Nicodemus, I think the Perrimans are so hungry right now, they wouldn't mind eating with anybody. Oh, good. I brought my own bowl. <laughs> You know, when Jesus was here on the earth, he used words to heal people. He just said things like, your faith has made you well. And his words brought healing to people who were crippled and couldn't walk, people who were blind and couldn't see, people who had leprosy, and all of a sudden, it was gone. Because there is power in the word of Jesus. And God's word is full of power because it's not an ordinary book. And God's word says that God sent his word to heal us. You see, in God's Word, the Bible, there are promises from God to heal your body. God said that Jesus took all of your infirmities and diseases. God said that Jesus already took your sicknesses. So that means you're not supposed to have them. And that sickness and disease that you may have doesn't come from God, no siree. God said the healing is what He wants for you. If you have a sickness or a disease in your body right now, I want you to pray with me. I want you to believe that God is going to take that disease out of your body and that you're going to get better from this day forward. Right now, let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word that says Jesus that took all of our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. The Bible says that you sent your word to heal us. And as we speak words right now, we speak your word, not our word, but your word. And I believe that your word heals the bodies of these boys and girls who are watching right now. I believe you're doing a work in them, making them well and making their sicknesses to leave. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, God's word has the power to heal. He's 
the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our bright morning star. And throughout eternity, I'm going to praise Him. on her in Jesus' name and command you sickness to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, just the other day, I prayed for a little girl whose ears were aching, and God instantly stopped that earache. But you know what's even greater than healing? Getting Jesus into your heart. Because when Jesus comes into your heart, you get a brand new heart. He heals the sin, takes away all the hurts and pains, and He gives you life inside your heart. Why don't you ask Jesus to come and live in your heart? If you've never done that, you need to, and all you've got to do is say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead and you are alive. And right now, I want you to come into my heart. If you pray like that and really mean it and believe it, the Lord Jesus will hear your prayer. He'll come into your heart and wash away every one of your sins, and you will have the greatest miracle that could ever happen to anyone. Yeah. 